Watch this. I could no longer mail it at that point because I couldn't guarantee that it would get there. Absentee ballots are the way to go for a lot of Idaho voters. Unless, of course, that absentee ballot does not find its way to the voter in time or at all. Then what do you do? If you actually did get your ballot, well, you might have noticed some names were not included. Don't worry, it's not a misprint. It might just be a way to streamline the process. Odd year election doesn't mean it should be an off year for your participation. I mean, people run for positions like mayor because they want the job, right? Well, unless we're talking about Boise's first mayoral election. Deadlines are set for a reason. They usually mean this is the very last moment you can do something if you expect a positive result. Deadline to turn in a school paper or you're going to get marked down for it being late. A deadline to pay your taxes or you're going to pay a late fee. A deadline to board a plane or it's just going to leave without you. You know, we got a few messages into our newsroom this morning from people who told us they did meet a deadline, but they didn't get the outcome they should have. A few people told us they didn't get their absentee ballot, even though they requested it before the deadline to do so. And we're hearing this from voters who live in the county with Idaho's highest voter turnout, that would be Ada County. The Ada County Elections Office tells us they were told by the U.S. Postal Service up to 753 people did not receive their absentee ballots in the mail. Now, that doesn't mean those people can't vote. It just means they'd have to show up the poll up at the polls to do so. An inconvenience defeating the purpose of the absentee ballot in the first place. But it can also pose a problem, a serious problem. Here's Andrew Barline. It's normally not a question of if, but when. I look at voting as a both a responsibility and a right. But this year, Jeff Scott, <laughs> he questioned if he had a vote at all yeah. by way of an absent absentee ballot. You know, I. Uh, was planning to be out of town, so I sent in for an absentee ballot. But come Monday afternoon, I was like, I haven't gotten a ballot yet. A ballot he planned to need well before Election Day. I actually chose to cancel my travel plans because I wanted to make sure I could vote. The absent ballot soon turned present, but the night before the election, defeating its intended purpose. When you look at it, the ballot has to be received by 8 p.m. today. So I could no longer mail it at that point because I couldn't guarantee that it would get there. But it just seemed ironic to me that, you know, an absentee ballot is about being absent and being able to still cast your vote. Jeff's right about the 8 p.m. deadline, but he's been cutting this election close from the beginning. Granted, I think I did it on the last day you could request them. Which was 11 days before the November 7th election. The Ada County Elections Office made it clear absentee ballots can take up to 10 days before they arrive. I didn't know that until I went to go request my ballot. You know, that's when they tell you that. It's a problem Jeff could fix. In this situation this year, it was a convenience for me. Uh, to some extent, because I could change my plans. And his ballot, it's now made its way into the right hands. I actually only am eight, in Ada County here. I had one item to vote on, the jail, and I, I wanted to make my voice heard. The Idaho Secretary of State's office says anyone in a similar situation can still vote in person at the polls in the event their absentee ballot does not arrive in time. Anyone waiting on an absentee ballot can also check its status at the Secretary of State's website. You know, it said it had been mailed, and that was the only information. Answering the question of if, but not when. I can't remember if it gave the data when it was mailed or not. Going forward, Scott's now focused on when he requests his absentee ballot to beat not just the lines, but also the deadlines. You know, maybe they should, you know, make the deadline for asking for your absentee ballot sooner so that they can have it to you at least, you know, five days before the uh, election so you can actually mail it in or such. Going forward, Jeff says he's going to make it a point not to wait until the very end to that deadline to request his absentee ballot if he so chooses to do that in the future. Because at that point, it's in the hands of the Postal Service. Mail can take time, Brian. There's unexpected delays. And, of right. course, they say six to ten days 
again, things could be unexpected. It might take longer as we learned 700 something people in Ada County might not get their absentee ballots today. And I think that's why they set those deadlines because like what's the absolute last time we can ask for this ballot that we can send it out and trust the mail service to get there. But even if they move it up by a day or two, you're still gonna be dealing with that. Yeah, so going forward, absentee balloters, if you want to rely on that, Earlier, the better. Otherwise, you might be gambling a little bit. Okay, so the serious problem of 753, uh, we haven't heard a lot of people saying that they won't be able to vote as of now because of that, though. I'm sure that's a possibility where people now, because they don't have that absentee, will not vote. Well, I mean, if you think about somebody who might have uh, transportation issues right. or somebody who might have a disability, then yeah, going to the polls might not be a great option for them. So that's, it's potentially possible, but yeah. for somebody like them who are retired, they just wanted a convenience, sure. they were planning on leaving town. Luckily for them, they were able to make it work today. Still leaving town? Uh, tomorrow, he says. Had to so they're delayed another day, and again, I guess that's the luxury of being retired, right? Yep, exactly. All right, thank you very much, Andrew. You know, absentee ballots have been a touchstone for several members of Idaho's majority party. After more than 129,000 Idahoans, which is about 21%, voted absentee in the 2022 general election, a lawmaker from Coeur d'Alene tried to take away that option from a lot of Idaho voters. Representative Joe Alfieri claimed voting absentee cheapens the voting process and is very open to fraud even though he presented no evidence of either of those things. His bill died on the House floor of the last session. But you know what we do have a lot of evidence of? Tens of thousands of Idahoans successfully voting absentee. Joe Paris is watching what is happening with our absentee ballots and everything else across the state today, Joe. And I just wanted to hop on to what you and Andrew were just talking about. A short time yeah. ago, our team uh, actually talked with Secretary of State Phil McGrain, and he says in terms of the Postal Service issues, they're not unique to Idaho. Across the country, they're seeing some problems with absentee ballots. But anyways, we can talk about that another time. Let's talk about this, though. I want to tell you, it's not a few people that are using absentee ballots. Close to 50,000 people have uh, requested a absentee ballot. And in the state of Idaho, it's not like everyone just gets one. You need to request one. So 47,000 were issued so far about 74% overall have been returned. And I know that a lot of people like to make, you know, some type of a conversation about, well, who, who's requesting these absentee ballots? 56% of all the ballots in uh, really absentee across the state, Republicans. So that's more than half of the percentage there, 26,000 in terms of the, the gross overall. In terms, though, of the Democrats, they make up 22%, a little bit more than 10,000. And then unaffiliated voters, about the same, 22% unaffiliated. In terms of looking closely, though, um, I know there's been a lot of questions about what's going on in the city of Boise. And we know in the city of Boise, there is going to be a lot of action tonight going on for the Boise mayoral race. Again, we've got close to 10,000 ballots that are out right now in terms of requested absentee ballots and um, at last check here at five o'clock 83 percent have been returned that is a pretty impressive return rate there is still time though to get your ballot in i'll tell you this if for whatever reason you still have your absentee ballot you can take it you can drop it off to one of the drop boxes and if it's there before 8 p.m that's where they get the final uh the final sweep so it's not like they ignore the drop boxes on the day of the election we also wanted to tell you we will hit the air tonight for our special coverage at 8 p.m following the elections across the state ktvb.com ktvb plus and KTVB YouTube. We're expecting our, our first results to come in between 8.15 and 8.30ish. That would be from A to County, and those would be the absentee and early votes. And for more election results, you can tune into the news at 10 and tomorrow morning at Wake Up Idaho. Also, if you have any questions, you can text ELECTION to 208-321-5614, and the link will go right to your phone. Uh, Brian should be fun yep. tonight. We'll hop on on digital at 8 o'clock and then 10 o'clock here on 7, but uh, polls close at 8 8 p.m. in your local time zone, so less than three hours. Exactly, and thanks for pointing out the fact that if you got your absentee ballot today because you waited till the last day of that deadline and you only got it in the mail today, you could still take that to the polling or to the elections office of your county yeah. and still turn it in and it's still good. And if for whatever reason you didn't want to do that, you can yep. bring your absentee ballot with you to your polling locations. They can spoil it and you can vote at the polls. Excellent. All right, thank you very much, Joe. All right, so whether you voted absentee or plan to or you're going to go out and still have about three hours left to do it in person, you might notice some names, or you may have noticed if you've already voted, some of these names that you thought would be on your ballot, well, they're missing. Why is that? Well, here's Joe Paris to explain. Idaho voters will head to the polls on Tuesday, November 7th, but some ballots will be missing city council candidates who declare to run. So why is that? According to Idaho code, for cities that have city councils with established seats and only one person is filed to run, 
no election for that position needs to be held. So, for example, current Meridian City Council member John Overton filed to run to keep his District 4 seat. But because no one else filed to run against him, Overton will be declared the winner. Thus, no reason to have him on the ballot. Same with current Boise City Council members Lucy Willits in District 1 and Jimmy Halliburton, District 6, both of whom are running for re-election. Both are running, though, unopposed, so they won't appear on the respective ballots. But what about write-in candidates? Voters can technically write in whoever they want, but in order for them to get elected, they would have had to file to run as a write-in candidate, and that deadline has passed. So yes, we can verify. Some candidates who declare to run for office, they just won't appear on the ballot, but only if they're running uncontested. Their election wins will become effective at their first city council meeting in January. There's an official protocol that city councils use to install them. All right, to find out what is exactly on your ballot, you can look at our voter guide. It's on our website at ktvb.com, or you can text the word vote to 208-321-5614, and we will send a link to that voter guide, and it'll go right to your phone. Previously, we've relied very heavily on our chief judges, who are trained, certified chief judges, to handle the security of those ballots and the uh, elections equipment. Now these get delivered directly to the precincts and the chief judges will now open them up and be able to set the whole process up. So these will contain everything except the ballots and the, the machines that are the scanners, the precinct scanners. Those were delivered this morning, but today some, well, about 20, of the Ada County precincts got their election equipment delivered to them in new security cages, and we showed them to you yesterday. Locally made, shop local as they say, but at what cost? Well, that's what Steve was wondering yesterday when he texted us this. Didn't have the answer at the end of yesterday's show, but he wanted to know, well, how much taxpayer funds were used to build these new voting precinct cages? Well, Steve, we reached out to find out. And Ada County said each cage, that costs about $2,300. Elections Division requested the money from the board for an extraordinary operational expenditure, which means it wasn't part of their initial budget. But the board looked into it and said, sure. Let's go with this because they thought it was a good use of money. So yes, the cages were paid for with Ada County taxpayer money and they only used 20 of them this time, but the plan is to have one for every voting precinct, every polling place across Ada County. So let's say there's about 80 of those out there across Ada County. Well, that could come at a cost to put one in every spot about $184,000. Most races for mayor, hotly contested battles, with the victor enjoying the spoils. But that wasn't the case when it came to who wanted to be Boise's first mayor. Apparently, no one did. How about you? You want the job? Well, tell us why. Or tell us what you think of the show. We'll take either one at this point. Text us. The number is on your screen, 208-321-5614. Of course, always include your name and the hashtag, the 208. And we might share yours at the end of the show. Well, if you think the last couple of elections for Boise mayor have been hotly contested, the last one being only settled by a, uh, I should say, uh, we had a revote 
What am I trying to say? They were tied. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, okay, so you should have seen that first one that happened in Boise, that first mayoral election. The first three, actually, because nobody wanted to be mayor. In fact, a large population wanted nothing to do with any part of city government. A look at the city of Boise's website, and they showed 45 people who have served as mayor in the city of Boise. But the oldest picture on that page, well, that isn't actually Boise's first mayor. Boise's beginnings can be traced back to territorial days. First platted in July of 1863, the city would become the state's capital within 18 months. But the city of trees wasn't actually yet an official city. So the newly relocated territorial legislature incorporated it for them with the caveat voters had to consent to a charter. Hold on, no charter meant no laws and no taxes, which is how Boise citizens liked it. So they rejected it. Again, the legislature stepped in and passed the charter in January of 1866 with one condition. The city now needed to elect a mayor and a council, which they did in May of 1866. But Boiseans weren't anti-government for nothing, and those they elected refused to serve. Same thing happened again in January of 1867. So Boise was without a mayor, without a council, and without a charter, which meant no means for people to buy property. Finally, in November of 1867, voters approved Boise's charter and elected L.B. Lindsay as mayor. But he wasn't having it either, and Lindsay also refused to take office. So Idaho's legislature stepped in one more time and appointed Henry Prickett as Boise's first mayor. And for decades, Prickett's picture hung on the walls of Boise City Hall with the caption of, First Mayor. Then in June of 1936, Roscoe Smith from Mountain Home posted a piece of paper to the Idaho statesman. Proof, he claimed, that his father, Dr. Ephraim Smith, was actually the first elected mayor of Boise. An election certificate signed by the Board of Elections from May of 1866. Remember when the winners first refused to serve? Well, Dr. Smith was the one who won the mayor's seat. So technically, Dr. Smith was Boise's first elected mayor, even though he never spent a day serving the city. Meanwhile, Prickett served just two months as mayor. He resigned in January of 1868, and he would later be appointed to the Territorial Supreme Court. Dr. Smith, by the way, is believed to be Idaho's first territorial treasurer as well. He ran a drugstore in town as well as a private hospital. He didn't die here, though. In 1891, he was killed by a streetcar in Toledo, Ohio. He died without the desire to be Boise's mayor.
Well, depending on where you spent your Tuesday, it's been either a little bit gloomy, a little bit sunny, or maybe a little bit of both, as it has been across the Boise area. Here's a live look at, from the main marina camera up in McCall right now, where it's 35 degrees, pretty overcast, damp as well. There's been off and on showers, especially this morning, across some of our higher elevations. The sun is setting over Bald Mountain and Sun Valley, our White Clouds camera capturing that. There was snow on the golf course early this morning, but with temperatures in the 40s in the Wood River Valley, that snow did melt away throughout the day today and we are seeing some cloud cover but also pretty brilliant sunset uh, beyond the clouds there as you can see illuminating the fall colors of the trees here from our sky cam seven shot so pretty nice evening in Boise if you don't mind some wind it has been very breezy right now we've seen the winds drop back down to about nine miles per hour so our 51 degree temperature in the city of trees will feel a little more bearable look at the breeze in mountain home though a 23 mile per hour wind it'll stay breezy until sunset likely beyond as well, but then by tomorrow morning, the wind should start to die down. Skies will clear, but that will lead to some very chilly temperatures early tomorrow and likely some fog as well on the heels of the wet weather we've had the last couple of days. We are still seeing some showers popping up in far southwest Idaho, most of it anchored right now over Owyhee County, but a couple of sprinkles still possible across the Central Mountains and the Treasure Valley, maybe even the Magic Valley, though some of this might end up being Virga, which is that precipitation that falls from the cloud, but then evaporates before it hits the ground. So skies will clear, like I mentioned, overnight will drop down likely to be low freezing across our lower elevations down to 15 in Stanley, mid 20s in Sun Valley, Haley area down to 21 in McCall. So if you park the car outside Boise, Twin Falls, surrounding areas, you'll likely be scraping the windshield if you head out early tomorrow. High temperatures will drop as well compared to today. Our high for Boise will be 54 today. We'll only hit 48 tomorrow. That will be our coolest day of the week. But the silver lining is we'll have lots of sunshine tomorrow. No precipitation in the forecast for the next couple of days. So we'll get, get to dry out a bit. If you've got leaves that need to be raked, they'll have a chance to dry out until Friday. We will bring a chance of some showers back into the Treasure Valley on Friday. More likely we'll see some snow up in the mountains. Veterans Day, we will see warmer temperatures, a high of 53 as we kick off the weekend there on Saturday. Warming into Monday will be up near 60 degrees on Monday with relatively mild conditions sticking around through the middle of next week. I'm sure you've heard it's election day, right? So how about some more election information, among other things you need to know about? Abby Davis has the 411. There have been many devastating teen suicides in the last few weeks. Mountain Home is one of the communities impacted. So on the 16th, Speaker Mark Marrow is coming to talk about suicide prevention at Mountain Home Junior High at 6 p.m. If you or someone you know is struggling, call or text the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline at 988 anytime. By now, you know it's election day. Hopefully, you've gone out and cast your votes. But if not, we have a few more bits of information. Polls close at 8 p.m. tonight. You can register to vote at the polls with a current photo ID and proof of residence. Just don't use an out-of-state license or cell phone bill. Other bills work. Also, if you usually vote at the Idaho Department of Parks and Recreation office for precincts 1813 and 1814, your new polling place is East Junior High School on East Warm Springs Avenue. If you're wondering why, Parks and Rec flooded yesterday. If you have an absentee ballot, make sure to drop it off by 8 p.m. tonight when the polls close. Happy voting! But that's not the only thing going on tonight. You'll be able to catch the Broncos men's basketball team on TV across Southern Idaho. You can tune into Channel 7.2 or 7-2 at 7 p.m. The game will also be streaming on KTVB's digital platforms. And that's the 411 on the 208. I'm Abby Davis.
All right, about two and a half hours left to get your votes in, but Jackie wanted you to know that, well, I guess didn't we know that you could request an absentee ballot. She says you don't need to request one for subsequent elections once you do already. An absentee ballot is automatically sent for subsequent elections. She wanted to know why that wasn't shared with us. Probably because, well, uh, PJ Smith answered that for us. Because you have to check a box in order for that to happen. You can request it online, which she did in January, checking all the boxes for the elections during the year and got each of them in plenty of time. He's Republican, elderly, and with medical conditions. So that problem was solved right there. Good to see Republicans taking advantage of the absentee process. They finally figured out what the Dems have known all along. Instead of just in person on Election Day, better Republican participation may result from this lesson, says Mike in Meridian. That's a good point. Why try to get rid of something that a lot of people take advantage of? And you saw what Joe showed you. A lot of Republicans take advantage of it. Cages are awesome. My school is a polling place, and it makes it easy to store all the election materials and keep them safe the day before the election, says Robbie. That's good to know. I look forward to the 2-8 every day because you're giving us the news, but more interesting stories, deep dives, and appeal to our curiosity. Just what we wanted to do. The word is runoff. I know.